How do you build a successful company or do business in China successfully as a foreigner? In this video, I'm going to share some of the lessons I've learned from 15 years working and doing business in China. So I first came to China in 2007. I studied Chinese at Peking University and I set up a company called China Admissions, which is an online platform for international students to study abroad in China. We work with many of the top universities and we have lots of students who are using our platform to apply and research and apply to universities in China. So in this video, I'm going to share some of the trends that I've seen in China, why China is unique and different to other markets. What are the four major challenges that foreigners have doing business in China? The three major ways to succeed in China, the three important things, how to raise investment in China or how not to raise investment and some of the things I've learned and the best practices for succeeding in China. So hopefully this can be helpful for some of you if you're considering or you're looking for a job in China or you're considering starting a company in China. So here are the three major trends that I've noticed in China. The first major trend is that China is changing very fast. One of the main things about China is that it is always seems to be changing. There's always something that is different is happening. So it's very common to have walked through a new build, new street and then see that new buildings are being completely changed. Or there could be some fast change happening in the environment, the business environment. There could be some new technology coming in or some new policies that you need to understand. So one of the constant things about China is that it's always changing. And one of the things about that is that maybe some of the lessons that I am sharing now may not be useful for you because China is changing and evolving, so it may not still be relevant. But anyway, these are some of the things that I have learned and I'm sharing them with you. One of the other changes that is constantly happening is that the workforce is changing. When I first came to China in 2007, I remember meeting many people who had an expat job and they were posted in China to work for the major international company, helping them to set up or grow operations in China. They were often working in some kind of technology or kind of sharing or trying to ensure that the local business was working well and trying to share the, tr the knowledge with the local market. They were actually given a high hardship allowance because it was apparently very difficult to live in China at the time and they had a far larger salary than the local staff. They were given a large uh, living allowance for apartments which went very far in China at that time and basically that has that does not really exist anymore. It's completely changed. Now there's many companies, well the, when I first came all of the big tech companies in a certain area in Chongguansun they were all international companies like Microsoft, Google, and they were headquartering these big buildings, but now those are all local companies and they're all hiring local staff. They're not hiring as many foreign expats in China anymore. This is one of the big trends that has basically meant that uh, people, they're now looking to hire local talent. There's so many local talent who's studied overseas and they've got incredible English skills, incredible Chinese skills, and they're quite frankly better at understanding the market and they are better and much cheaper than there would be an expat in, who would be coming to China not really knowing much about the market. So this is one of the big trends that I've noticed that's happening. Another of the big trends is that it's just becoming more regulated and just more mature. The market is just maturing. It's We're not seeing these super fast, basically the market is just becoming more mature as people, as, the, uh, as is something that you'd expect. So what is different about doing business in China compared to other countries? And um, this is something that I sometimes consider because doing business abroad is always going to be challenging. If you look at Italy, if you look at if you're a British person doing business in Italy or, or Russia or Ghana or India, it's not going to be easy because it's a different environment. So is doing business in China actually comparatively more difficult than other markets where you don't speak the language and they have local requirements? And I would say that it's probably not that much different. It's probably every market that you try and attack is going to be challenging. One of the main differences is that it's just a little bit more closed in terms of the technology industry, which is is kind of separated from other other markets. And so that it doesn't have this inflow and it has kind of different perspectives. So that may be one part that's different. But in other areas, every international market is going to be challenging wherever you go to Africa, whether you go to other countries. So this is something that I don't really know the answer to is doing business in China much harder or much more difficult than doing business in India. I don't really know, uh, but it's some question that I have. Then obviously what is unique about doing business in China is that the language is Definitely it's much harder to learn Chinese than it is to learn in Italian because 
For example, if you're going to learn Chinese, you need to spend about two and a half thousand hours learning it, if, according to the uh, diplomatic, uh, according to how many hours diplomats should learn spending the language. There's a source that you can check out in the description. But if you're learning Italian, it may take five or six hundred hours just because it's more similar to English. And then obviously we share more cultural similarities with Italians than we do with Chinese. So it's just further away. And then they do have a different mind, cultural mindset and a different different way of looking at things, which makes it very unique because China is in some way unique to other countries. So what are the key challenges to doing business in China? The first is obviously the language barrier, which I've just mentioned. The second most difficult thing about doing business in China is just that how competitive it is. Because it's such a highly populated market, there's 1.3 billion people. So there's just intense competition in every area. And then the cultural differences are that in China, it's, uh, I mean, if you look at the Hofstede cultural dynamics theory, and this is matches with what I've seen, is that compared to British people, Chinese people will tend to think in more in a long term. They will consider relationships over transactions. So it's more relationship based. And it is kind of more words that I would spring to mind to describe it as more fluid and more harmonious. They're seeking to protect relationships and to uh, be more dynamic or more fluid and flexible in how they're doing work compared to in Britain, UK, which may be looking more towards uh, the letter of exactly the agreement of what you say uh, and these kind of things. So it's more, this is one of the main differences. An example of this would be, for example, if we have a contract with a partner, the contract is something that is kind of representative of our relationship. And if we want to negotiate the contract later, it's perfectly fine to do that, according to in Chinese culture. And it's just a written down idea of what the relationship is. But in UK, a contract is basically legally binding. And so, it shouldn't necessarily be changed. I mean, it can be changed, but it's, it's the idea is to just think of every issue in advance and then try and write them down. And the other difference is that uh, in terms of the culture, the background of the culture is that in China is a, the history of China is that it's come from a manufacturing economy. And so this, if you're working in services or if you're working in manufacturing, there's a clear difference between uh, UK, which is a service oriented economy. And so, People are looking very clearly on what is the return on investment, what is the uh, expected return on these kind of services, and what is the product I'm getting. For example, the SaaS market is far less developed, and the, it's much, still much more of a product-led market, and so much more of a which comes from the manufacturing culture compared to Britain, which is more of a service, much more of a service economy, uh, where you will uh, you have a different mindset. One of the other things is that costs in China are quite low compared to other markets and so uh, and people save a much larger percentage of their income in China than in other other countries like Britain so people this is something to think about when you're looking at commodity if you're looking at some kind of commodity uh, business which is why I would why it's important not to be doing something that's commodity it's important to be doing something that is that you have a unique brand that is differentiated or or luxury and the high end instead of a low end because it's impossible to compete and in terms of the social dynamics this is probably the biggest difference that I've noticed between UK and China is that People think in terms of a group, in terms of family, in terms of the company, in terms of the country, much more compared to in UK is much more individualistic. So this is something that's important to consider. And then the other thing is that the government plays such an important part in every industry. And so it's important to always be aligning with the government objectives and to understand where the government is likely to take each industry. Whereas in UK, it's a much more free market in some way. Uh, it's such a generalization, but it's usually there are a lot of there is not the government does not play much much of a role in many industries compared to in China where there may be some strategic objectives and then the industry gathers behind the government's objectives. So, for example, in my company, we are helping international students to study in in China and we're helping universities to internationalize. So we align with some of the object objectives of Chinese universities, 
which is to increase the number of international students so that they can grow in the rankings. And then we are, our incentives is also to help them because they want to build 42 world-class universities by 2050. So we align with the objectives to help them achieve that. And I would always say that it's important to always be aligning with those objectives. In China, it's like essential to be aligning with those objectives and to not understand what those objectives are. This can be a challenge if the business or the target is not necessarily aligned and it's just profit seeking. Uh, I think there's going to be some kind of challenge. You may, may have some challenges from my perspective. So in terms of strategies to succeed in China, there seems to be uh, three, three ideas that I have on how to succeed in China. The first is that because as a foreigner that you have hardly any advantage in China compared to local companies and there's so much competition in the Chinese market. So in order to succeed in China, it's necessary to bring something or have something that the local market doesn't have. And so that could be, for example, I would argue that if you are going to go into a company, if you're going to go into a search engine company or you're going to create some kind of business like Meituan or any kind of technology company, it's always going to be a Chinese company that wins because this is a business where you can see a hundred competitors come up. Mobike or Uber has, well, Uber did very well. It's kind of an exception in the industry. Uh, but most of the companies in China that are technology, for example, if you look at Groupon and Meituan won this market and there were just hundreds of these competitors, it's such a ruthless competition. I think as a foreign company, it's going to be impossible to compete in that market because you don't have the local knowledge. You don't have the understanding, the deep understanding and the speed that you're one person. There can just be a hundred competitors starting the next day. So I don't think as a foreigner, you basically can, can, can succeed in industries where you have an advantage that a local competition doesn't have. And so if you are a British person, then education may be an industry that we have an advantage in compared to other countries because we have the English language, we have a high quality, internationally known high quality education system. In the case of France, it could be luxury goods, which is something that France has that Chinese companies may not have at the moment, there are some luxury brands, but each is, this is something that I think is a really important strategy is to bring something into China and have some advantage that the local market doesn't have. Then obviously it's important to align with the local government to understand what they say. And usually there's, it is quite clear. They are quite transparent and uh, seems to be transparent in what their targets are. And then the importance of succeeding in China is that I think it's essential to have a local management in China, which could be a foreigner who has lived in China and speaks Chinese and has these relationships, or it could be hiring a local Chinese person who has the understanding and the trust and has the uh, autonomy to operate in a Chinese fast paced way that is separate from the international company. And I think this autonomy of speed is really important, especially for American companies, because the time zone, it just has such a big drag on if decisions. If everything has to take an extra day to have feedback and, and to come back, it, it can't operate at such a fast pace and it just gives such a big disadvantage. And there is there is nothing quite like just being in China and just having kind of conversations on the street with people that you meet, with customers, with and going to meet people face to face. When I was have been outside of China and I'm discussing a, a deal with a Chinese company and or a Chinese university and then I come to China and I meet them face to face. We may have been discussing it for two or three months and then we just come face to face we have an agreement. It's just so important to have. I think especially in China it's important to have this local communication uh, with the Chinese companies and so I think it's, this is something really important. In terms of raising investment I've successfully we have successfully raised the investment in China and I think that there are kind of two the challenges to raising investment in China. The first is that um, it's very, if you're looking to raise investment from Chinese companies, it's very challenging because there is this kind of belief from China, many Chinese investors that it's not a good idea to invest in a foreigner because the foreigner may not be committed to China and maybe it's hard for foreigners to succeed in China. And so it's not worth investing in them. And this may become a self-fulfilling prophecy, this kind of idea that they have, because if they don't invest in foreigners, then they don't become successful. Um, but I think there is some kind of truth in it that uh, foreigners have challenges competing in the local market unless they have some kind of uh, advantage that they bring that the other people don't have. And that is usually in a cross-border market, a, cr a business that is uh, working between China and their own country. 
I know of very few foreigners in China who have succeeded at a local business. And I think most of the people who succeed in China have been doing it through cross-border businesses that are bringing resources from their home country or helping Chinese to access resources around the world, which is something that, foreign, that Chinese people have difficulty doing and need help. And so I think because of that reason, uh, it is actually correct that Chinese companies should not be investing in foreign companies because uh, there are so many bigger opportunities for them, such as local companies that can take these huge markets like Meituan that foreigners have challenges competing with. And so I think the, this kind of situation, usually the cross-border companies are going to not be as fast growing and they're not going to be as compet as uh, fast growing and their market size is not, is not going to be as big compared to local companies. So this is a massive generalization. Obviously, Alibaba started as a cross-border company. Uh, so I think this is kind of a generalization, but I think that most of the companies that I know in China that have succeeded have been those that have been cross-border and they have tended not to become as big as uh, the local companies such as Tencent or for example, Alipay, for example, Meituan, these kind of the big Baidu, these big Chinese tech companies. So what are the things that I've learned from doing business in China and what do I think is important in the future? I think that what I've learned is that it's just so important to understand the language and to adapt to the culture. And the if you're a foreigner in China, it's so important to learn the language and to understand the culture really deeply. Relationships is obviously extremely important and hiring knowledgeable local managers is extremely important and hiring is extremely important. It's so important to utilize local networks, finding local partners and to have this on the ground. And so those are some of the things I've learned. In terms of uh, some ha thing that I've learned is that sales is more effective in the morning than in the afternoon. So if you want to do sales, it's much more effective to do it between 8.30 and 10.30 is the peak best time in China to do sales, something I've learned. That's a few ideas and thoughts that I have, if it could be helpful for you or some people. And if you would like to understand the Chinese market much better, or you would like to succeed in China, I really recommend that you check out China Admissions, check out China, some of the programs at Chinese universities, because this is a great way to spend time in China, to understand the local market, to build connections, to learn the language, and to find careers in China. If you're looking for a job in China, then you can take a master's program and you kind of fast track your way to a work visa, especially if you study at a top university like the C9 League, like Tsinghua or Fudan, for example. And uh, this is some of my thoughts. I hope it could be helpful for you and I uh, wish you the best in your learning, in your China success story.